All right, in this one, we are going to cover an overlook command, the rest command. The rest command reads from a Splunk REST API and returns all the data associated with what you build out in your SPL from that API call. I say it's an overlook command because there are so many internal searches you can run to pull valuable information about your environment from it. So let's take a look at a few examples. First, we're just going to throw it in. And right here, it's going to tell us that we need a REST URL to pull from. So with each REST command, you need to provide it with an endpoint to pull from. You can find all of those endpoints here in the Splunk API reference manual. They are listed out, and these are all the endpoints that you can pull from, and they all work with your REST command. And you can click into them to view more information about them if you want. So we can go back to building out our search, and I'm going to give it a URL to pull from. I'm going to work with services, authentication, users. And if we just run this, and if we scroll through all of our fields, this is what comes out from the complete API pull from that specific endpoint. If we scroll over to the right, we can see this field called Splunk server. This can come in handy if you are in a distributed environment and need to specify what server you want to pull from. But I'm not in a, in a distributed environment, so I will not be using that one, but you can set all of these as fields as, as arguments uh, if you wanted to. But I'm going to take some of these fields here and add them into my search. And I'll take role, which looks like they're assigned role, which we have power, user admin, restricted, can delete, etc. I'll do the fields command and we'll do roles and title. There we can see we have our roles assigned with our users, limiting that information that comes back. And earlier, like I said, if you were in a distributed environment, you can just give your Splunk server that you want to pull this from, uh, and it'll just pull from that host. Now let's pull from another endpoint. So I'm gonna leave this one open and just duplicate the tab. Let's pull information about all the applications currently running on our instance. I'm gonna work with services, apps, local. I'll delete my fields and I will run this. Now you can start to work with what fields you want to search from. And let's just say I wanna see all of my apps that are running for their versions, the current version of the app that they're running and the update version that's available. So we can sort in this field of update version and update homepage gives you the, the name of the app or where you would pull that from on Splunk base. Uh, update name is the actual name of the app. You can pull any of these fields that you wanted to to build out your search. I'm probably going to focus with title, version, and update version. So I'll just simply search on anything that has a value for update.version. I'll give it a wildcard. I'll run this, and I get five results. So the last thing I'll do is just clean it up a bit with those three fields of interest and I'll table it and I'll do fields for title, version, and update version. Just make sure I don't want to grab anything else, but... And we'll run this. And this is just a nice simple example that you could throw into a panel, into a dashboard and just glance at. And it tells you what, what applications you may need to update. So you could save it off and just glance at it and know what apps are update or need to be update or ones that have an update available to them. All right, let's move on to another example. Let's say we want to see all of the users and their assigned roles based on the index of data that they are allowed to pull from, that they're allowed to search from. This is helpful for those of you that need to have some access to data in specific indexes restricted to other users when you're ensuring that not all people searching in your environment have access to data that you don't want them to be able to see. You can restrict what users can search 
and what indexes they're allowed to search or not search under settings and then users and restrictions, or you can create a custom role. Um, but let's try and build something out. So for this one, we're going to pull from services, authorization, roles, scroll through all of our fields and pick out which ones we want. We also notice the field of search indexes allowed. I'm going to grab title and that field, table them out, and then rename title as assigned role. Now we can see all the assigned roles and what restrictions they have. You can see the restricted user. I made this role up uh, for a user called Bob and they are only allowed to search the web index, but they are not allowed to search any other index in our environment. I'll go ahead and duplicate this tab and build out another one that we're eventually going to join together. So we just pulled from roles. Now I'm going to work with users. These are the two fields that I was interested with in users role and title. And I'm actually going to rename title to make it a bit clearer and I'll call it user. Cause when I combine these, I want to know exactly which one means what. So I'll keep this one as a sign role. I have this one as user. Now I can combine them both together and get the whole picture. So I will copy this one. And I will go over to our first search. And I'm going to implement the join command. The join command is used to combine the results of a sub search with the results of the main search. So we can use one or more fields um, that have to be in common and combine these in a search result to get the combined results that we are looking for. For our options, we can set the type to be inner, outer, or left. The difference between inner and left join is how the events are treated in the main search that do not match any of the events in the sub search. In both inner and left joins, events that match will be joined together. So this is why I'm going to do join type equals left. And a max argument specifies the maximum number of sub search results that each main search result can join with. So if I set max equal to zero, like I will do here, there is no limitation. And if you don't set max equals to zero, the default value will be one. Then I will open up a pair of square brackets and paste in my other command that I built out on the other tab from the roles URL. And it should be as simple as that. If I wanted to have a third URL to pull from, I can do a join again after this line, open up the brackets and paste that search in. Now you can see each user, their assigned role, if they were to be assigned that role and the indexes that they would be allowed to search. So Bob, if he is assigned the restricted user role, he would only be able to search the web index. Same if I were to be assigned the restricted user role, then I would only be able to search the index of web. So this is an easy way for you to see what users in your environment, based on what role you were to give them, what data you would allow them to search. So simple example, pulling from the rest command, it's definitely under leveraged and you can build out a lot of cool panels or visualizations to kind of get a better picture of what's happening in your environment, certain restrictions, or just general information that's being pulled from an endpoint.